first, we were told that there is a, a dark skin suspect a dark-skinned man that was going to go to court. This was last Tuesday after the Boston bombing. And that was from two FBI sources, not to us, but to two different respectable journalists at CNN. Um, And then it was changed. We've already given you the timelines. We know the blaze knows maybe not who that dark-skinned man was for sure, but we know that there was a Saudi in the hospital that was a a terror suspect and an event file was opened up on him i want you to understand what an event file is in case this is the first time you've been listening to this uh, storyline on this program an event file is part of the patriot act it is 212 section 2123 b that is the worst designation you can give somebody that means they're the worst of the worst um uh, 3b uh, section 2123 b means you are a terrorist means that you were engaged in terrorism or you are um, about to be engaged in terrorism. It goes beyond a no-fly list. It is not a no-fly list. A no-fly list does not... If your name... If you've ever gone to the airport and you're like, what do you mean I'm on the no-fly list? You are not a Section 2123B. A Section 2123B is on the no-fly list. But if you find yourself on the no-fly list, you are not a Section 2123B automatically. Because this is part of the Patriot Act, it is an abuse of power to just trigger this without going to the panel of judges and say, this is the evidence that we have. Now, we know that they were in the house uh, of this uh, Saudi for at least nine hours. They were in this house, and after they left the house, they had the evidence to say this guy is a terrorist suspect, um, and we believe he is a danger. They then had to go to the panel. They also interviewed the roommates for five hours. They went to the panel. They made their case. He, uh, an event was opened up. That means it's a file. A event means terror suspect. And terrorist activity. He was actively engaged in terrorist activity. When you put that in, it's extraordinarily difficult to put it in, and you do not put it in and then take it off. To take it off, the only two people that can do it, State Department uh, and uh, somebody at the uh, NCTC, National uh, Terror or the national, uh, I don't remember, it's a terrorist. Uh, Na- NCTC's National Counterterrorism thank you. Center. Okay. That's the only way it's taken off. It's an extraordinarily uh, big deal. It is my understanding that it is so, well, let, let, let me phrase it this way. It is so rare that somebody's name is taken off outside of death that no none of our sources can tell you or tell us that it's ever happened. It is laughable what Janet Napolitano said yesterday. Again, she's changed her story. First, there were there was nobody that was on that that was put on a watch list. Nobody. There was nobody being deported. Then it was, well, there is, but there's somebody, there's two people. Then yesterday, she said these words under oath he was not on a watch list uh what happened is uh this uh, this student was in the in, really when you back it out he's in the wrong place at the wrong time he was never a a subject he was never even really a person of interest and keep in mind based on what you just said she just said he was never even really a person of interest you searched his house for nine hours you interviewed his roommates for five hours right. and he wasn't even really a person of interest right why wow. is that why wow. is that that's an abuse of power at best we're talking an abuse of power uh because he was being interviewed he was uh at that point put on a watch list and Not then possible. when it was quickly determined he had nothing to do with the bombing the watch listing status was removed not possible okay okay not possible how do i know that's not possible well first of all um, because we have multiple sources i believe we have about 10 sources on this now um and we know what happened 
Now, as soon as she said that, um, we all kind of danced a little jig because we never thought we would get her to admit that. But she has. So now that she's admit that, I can show you, I'll show you just the front page of this, but this is the actual document that she is saying was was made because he, they were interviewing him. But what's on this, this is just the cover. Um, and we'll just leave it at that. But that's just the cover. I want you to understand now, new information, exclusive information from the blaze. The event file created for Abdul Rahman Ali Al-Harbi indicates in this file that he is armed and dangerous. That's on page two. Armed and dangerous. He was admitted into this country under a special advisory option. Important for you to know. Journalist, take notes if you still do that. A special advisory option, which is usually reserved for visiting politicians, VIPs, or journalists. That's how he got into the country. The event file cover page indicates that he was granted status, quote, without full vetting. So now this person of non-interest is somebody that is such a high VIP in Saudi Arabia. He came here without full vetting. Now, we're still checking, but we believe Section 428 of the Homeland Security Act specifically states that all Saudi nationals must be vetted 100% before they're allowed in. Saudi Arabia, I believe, is the only country for which 100% vetting is required. Now, that has been changed this last January after this guy was let in. That was... That was been, that has been changed to where now you don't have to vet anyone from Saudi Arabia. They changed that, the director of Homeland Security did, in January. Now, one of the first excuses given by law enforcement when confronted about this pending deportation was that he was operating on an expired visa. But according to the event file, the file with his name on it, According to the event file, his visa is good until 11th of November, 2016. Now, hold on. So you're saying this person of interest that was just here to go to school had an expired visa, the one that is going to school, because remember, there's two. He was going to school, but he had an expired visa. No, if that's your story, you're wrong. Now let's look and find out why this guy was in here on a special advisory option. Uh, but let's not get let's not blow past the fact that you say a guy who was just quickly put on the watch list had a special notation that he was armed and dangerous. The event file indicates that he entered the U.S. on 8-28-2012 in Boston. I don't know why they selected 828. Everyone knows that's Martin Luther King's day that he gave the speech. I think it's racism. But he was led into the country on 828, but says the subject is a student at the University of Findlay, Ohio. He has never shown up. Another thing the Department of Homeland Security says is untrue. Fine. We've talked to the school. Now, it's understand, you need to understand, and this is where it really gets interesting. When a file is created in the system, the author or authors are notified via email any time it is accessed. And given the email address of the person accessing the file. So if anyone went in and tried to touch this file at all the people who wrote it are notified john smith just tried to get in and look at this now that's going to cause a problem because of that we know the following after the file was created it was first amended to remove the terrorism and deportation reference then Someone later went in and tried to destroy both the original and the amended versions. 
I don't believe we're going to give the email address out at this point. What they didn't know is that the Blaze and others and some and our evidence might be in safes by this point in case something might happen to us. What they didn't know is that copies had been made. The original event file was reviewed and approved by two high-level agents. If you think the blaze is bluffing, if you think that we are making things up, the two high-level agents that created the original event file, Chief Watch Commander Mainberg and Watch Commander Mayfield. The cover sheet reads as file uh, uh, as follows. Subject: Al Harbi Name Abdul Rahman Ali E. Date of birth 312 1993 COC Saudi Arabia. Subject is an exact match. Hear this. Subject is an exact match to no fly TPN number 10375061192. So, in other words, there is a no fly order on him. And this event file says, yes, and this is the same man that has the no-fly event, uh, the no-fly order on him as well. Those are two separate things. It's really important for you to understand. It is such a big deal to be a 2213B. Uh, uh, What is it again? 212. Sorry. 2123B. It is such a big deal that you don't... You don't have a no-fly order on you, and then it trips you into it. It could happen the other way, but it doesn't happen this way. So this event order is saying subject is an exact match to that no-fly order. Derogatory information reviewed. This will tell you now. You don't just call up and say put them on a no-fly. Derogatory information. That means... We have been presented bad information on this guy, was reviewed by W.C. Mayfield and C.W.C. Mainberg. It was found to be sufficient to request visa revocation. NTCP is requesting revocation of FOIL uh, number E3139541. Subject uh, is inadmissible to the United States under INA 212A3BI2. SAO was not completed prior to visa issuance. So in other words, they didn't vet this guy. He is not allowed to be in the country and they didn't vet him. Subject is currently in the United States, admitted F1 student at BOP on uh, 2812. Subject is the University of Finlay, 1000 North Main Street, Finlay, Ohio. Subject has, very important, listen to this. Subject has one, then the number one, prior event. Event number 1648067. What does that mean? That means this guy doesn't have one event. When they opened this while he was at the hospital, they found he's already in the system. He's already a 2123B. He has another terrorist event under his belt. Uh, Finns promoted. NT record in place. No schedule found at this time. That's what the Blaze is releasing today. Bring it on. Would you like some more? Because if you want another helping, we'll give it to you. This is what's happening in our country. We have a media that is so out of control that they will destroy anyone who stands up and says Americans are in danger by both parties, by all people involved. It's not an American that is uh, that is doing this. It is an American that is protecting the country that is shipping terror into our country. Now, you can tear me apart all you want. Bring it on. I've had my fill of it. I can take it. Bring it on. 
but it doesn't make the facts go away. Any reporter, any journalist that might be listening, do not take my word for it. Take the facts that I just gave and ask the Department of Homeland Security now. Excuse me. Explain away this. And when they come to you with more lies, you come back here. Because we have more. Once they explain away all of this, go ahead. If you want to continue to discredit me, you will only discredit yourself. More importantly, you will put this country and the citizens of this country at stake. This is not about one guy. By the way, will somebody ask, where is this extraordinarily dangerous man? Where is he? Ask that question. You're not going to like the answer. For you, the American citizen, I want you to know you should have great hope. You should have great pride. There are people that are risking everything to bring this information. They are stunned and angry at how many journalists will not report this story. There are other journalists that have actually filed reports and the uh, corner offices, the offices of the power in these organizations have spiked them with no reason given. I will tell you that CARE and the Muslim Brotherhood and this administration plays for keeps. Anybody who reports on this information is in danger. You're in danger of losing your life or your career. You're in danger of having something bad happen to you. Payback will be a bitch on this one. But I have to tell you, if you care to continue to discredit, that's fine. I may be able to uh, not, you know, have a good name in society, but I'll sleep at night because I won't be responsible for the next terror strike. Call your congressman. Tell him to read The Blaze. This story will be posted in a few minutes.